So in the last video, we talked about how when you have a lot of glucose in your blood, which I'm drawing here as these little blue circles, your pancreas, and specifically certain cells in your pancreas called beta cells, which I'll draw here, release insulin into the blood. So they put insulin out into the blood, and this insulin tells certain cells in your body to take up the glucose and store it. And here is such a storage cell, and it is going to take up the glucose because there's insulin in your blood. So now, after a while, after a while, the situation is going to look quite a bit different because now you've pushed a lot of this glucose into your storage cells, and so you're going to have a lot less in your blood. So here there's less in your blood, partly because you've used it up. Other cells in your body, like your brain cells, have used it up, but partly also because insulin has pushed a lot of the glucose into these storage cells here. Now, it's not actually stored there as glucose. It's converted to something else, which we'll talk about in the next video. But it is stored there, and so now that there's very little glucose in the blood, your beta cells, beta cells are no longer going to be putting insulin into the blood. So a question you might have is, now if you haven't eaten for a while, how do you actually make use of the glucose that you stored? Is it just going to naturally go back into the blood when you don't have insulin? Well, that's actually not a crazy possibility, but that's not the way it works. Your body has another hormone, which tells the storage cells to release the glucose when you need it. So that hormone is not released by the beta cell. It's released by a cell right next to the beta cell called an alpha cell, which is also in the pancreas. And the hormone we're going to draw as little green squares. So it'll be floating through your blood, and it'll tell your storage cells to release glucose, and it's called glucagon. And a nice way to remember the function of glucagon is to realize that it acts when glucose is gone from your blood. So it's released from your alpha cells there, and when this is happening, your beta cells are no longer releasing insulin which again we're going to draw as these little triangles. So again, to repeat, these cells, the beta cells and the alpha cells, are in the pancreas. And when the alpha cell is releasing glucagon, these glucose molecules in the storage cells are going to leave storage and go back into circulation. So why are we doing all this again? It's because here we have all this glucose in the blood and we want to store it so that we can use it over a long period of time. And here, we don't have much glucose in the blood, and we want to make withdrawals from the bank, from where we stored all this glucose, so that we can feed, for example, let's say, a brain cell up here. And actually, it turns out that basically, what glucagon and insulin are trying to do together is to maintain a steady amount of glucose in the blood. And we might get a better idea of this if we look at how insulin and glucose levels vary over time. So on this plot here, this axis is going to be time, and this axis is going to be concentration. And let's say that at time zero, we're in this second situation where we haven't eaten in a while, so we have some glucagon in the blood, and we probably have very little insulin in the blood. But then let's say that at this time right here, we do what we talked about in the previous video, which is to say we eat a nice big piece of chocolate cake. Suddenly, pretty quickly, we're going to get a huge spike in glucose in the blood, and so we're going to revert over to this situation. And as a result of the glucose spike, we get what's called an insulin spike. So insulin is going to shoot up, so that we can quickly push all this glucose from the chocolate cake into our storage cells. And that, that act of storing it's going to happen pretty quickly, and then the insulin is going to fall back down. So that's approximately what the insulin levels are going to look like. Meanwhile, glucagon, once you eat the cake, it's going to quickly go down, because your alpha cells in your pancreas are going to suddenly see all this increased glucose, and they're going to say, well, 
We don't want to be taking glucose out of storage since we have so much already in the blood. So the alpha cells are going to decrease the amount of glucagon they're producing, so that's going to go down. And over time, as your body uses up the glucose that's in your blood, your glucagon is going to start to climb back up so that you can replenish the glucose in your blood slowly. And so again, the purpose of all this is to maintain a constant glucose level in the blood. And the reason why we want to do that is so that we can feed our body parts predictably and over a longer period of time. So maintain constant glucose. So basically what these two hormones are going to do is they're going to take this chocolate cake and take all the glucose in it and spread that glucose over time throughout the body.